My name is Jeffrey Hibbett, and this is my research for my French Revolutionary Weapons Artifact. And I am in Professor Harris's class. The guillotine is what I will first be talking about, and is a known way of execution and a known weapon during the time of the French Revolution. It is a notorious killing machine that took the lives of thousands during the French Revolution. Some admirable victims include King Louis and Mary Antoinette. It consists of two tall wheel walls wielding a heavy blade at the top that drops down on the victim decapitating them. As you can see in the image I provided, it has the two walls supported by two pillars with the wall on top to support the blade. And the pillars are mainly there to support the, the velocity of the drop of the blade, which is ridiculously fast. And it shows a man here with the basket that will be catching the head of the person decapitated. And those decapitated are laid down, awaiting their death via a huge blade slicing down on their head. It was the main weapon of choice and mass murder of innocents during the reign of terror, which killed thousands of innocents of uh, Frenchmen who, were, who weren't in line with the French Revolution and who disagreed with it. And most executions done with a guillotine are public, as shown in this picture, just to ensure that those those against the French Revolution were made made a point of and were publicized that those who weren't with it will be decapitated, which was the main cause of the reign of terror. Pikes are also considerable in the French Revolution. They are nine foot long spears with a foot long blade. As you can see, these men are carrying them high above their head. They're very long in length. Uh, some pikes feature a cross design meant to stop the blade from impaling the victim too deeply. This means that on top of the blade, there would be two cross blades here so that if someone is impaled by the pike, then it wouldn't just continue to go in their body, making it harder for it to pull out of them. And instead, it will stop it short so that someone can deliver a quick and easy kill and be able to pull out their pike very easily and go on to the next person. Uh, pikes are often used to display the heads of enemies while marching in war. This was the main purpose of pikes usually. As you can see in this picture, these men are uh, holding decapitated heads of, you would assume they're enemies and they're gladly holding it as you can see on their faces. And it, Pikes can also be used in mid to close range combat, but not preferred because, like I said, pikes are mainly used to display the head of enemies. And they are usually present on the battlefield as well. Close range combat in the French Revolution. Close range weaponry in the French Revolution included the cavalry pistol, which is a smaller gunpowder powered weapon which not very, with not very much range. It is basically a shorter bayonet with a cut off barrel and looks like what a modern pistol would today except with features of the the musket. My apologies, not the bayonet. Uh, sharp weapons such as bayonets and swords were also used in close combat. Bayonets were large knives attached to the barrel of the gun and were used to impale enemies, which was quicker than reloading. And this picture shows a man using a bayonet and it shows the range of the bayonet as well. The bayonet was mainly used in close quarter combat or if men missed a shot from a considerably close range and they wanted to attack their enemies before reloading, they would just charge them with their bayonet. Close range combat continue. Those who used close range weapons such as swords were in the cavalry unit. The cavalry unit consisted of men using sabers such as this one and lances, which were long poles with a sharp tip, not to be mistaken for pikes. Lances were used mainly for warfare and not to display enemy heads and were a great, um, had a great range on them to use off a of horseback for these cavalry men. And cavalry units moved by horseback and were the only users of horseback. So they had the ability to run into enemy ter territory and strike them with their weapons. And this picture just depicts a common saber used by these men. And muskets. Muskets were among the most common weaponry, weaponry used in the French Revolution. Here is a picture of a general musket which wields a bayonet at the end of it. The rifle did not have very much range, but it packed a devastating shot. The projectile used are a single small musket ball, 
but it did require a 20 second reload and the reload was done by the muzzle. While, I, while allies are reloading their muskets, others shoot in a strategy where consecutive shots can go off by having teammates shoot and reload at a specific time. The musket was m the most used weapon during the French Revolution because of its um, the shot it packed and its considerable range wasn't too much, but it was good and close to mid warfare. The only downfall was the reload time and the fact that the reload had to be done through the muzzle, which made those who were reloading in the battlefield pretty vulnerable. And artillery, weapons of force. The French underwent huge developments and advancements in artillery. Artillery deals with heavy, large weapons that shoot large balls that can penetrate enemy territories or pick off more than one person at once. Cannons are an example of this, which fire a ball and is wheeled around, yet extremely immobile. Here shows a picture of a cannon. Um, as you can see, it's taking about seven to eight men to wield one cannon and move it around. So it shows the immobility of it, but artillery weapons proved to be a devastating force in the French Revolution. Uh, Jean Baptiste de Gribval. He previously served as Inspector General, General of the French Artillery. He made modifications to the French cannon that gave the French the advantage. He, by bo boring out the barrels instead of casting the bore into the piece, he achieved finer tolerances with less windage, which negated the use of a lot of gunpowder. Basically, what uh, Grival did was use a special way to cast the inside of the barrel to achieve finer tolerances and less windage so that the balls would not require as much gunpowder as a usual cannon would. He also shortened the barrel of the weapon and managed to reduce the weight of the musket ball from 500 kilograms to only 290 kilograms. By reducing the barrel and the weight of the ball, as well as the use of gunpowder, this allowed for the weapon to be fired faster than other weapons and also the altercations led to the overall weight of the weapon to be reduced, which made them more mobile and can even be led by horse. And here's a picture showed with Griffal's cannon in practice with a shorter barrel, and it shows how it is being led by horseback rather than eight men. And that concludes my research for my French Revolution weapons artifact. Thank you.